Hare Krishna. <laughs> Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janavala Bhagiri Varadhari Gopi Janavala Bhagiri Varadhari Yasoda Nandana, but the Janna Ranjana Yasoda Nandana, but the Janna Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari. Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Hare. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Om Vishnupad Paramahansa Paruddhika Charge Vashtotar to the Sri Srimad Divine Grace Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai Iskan BBT Founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Jayam Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Paradika Charja Astotar with the Shri His Divine Grace Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Kijai Ananda Koti Vaishnava Nikijai Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thakur Kijai Srimad Bhagavad Gita Kijai Asamaveta Bhaktivinda Kijai All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees all glory to Shiguru and Goranga. Okay. Read that. Read that. that. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. On this 7th day of September, 2022, in San Diego, reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And we are reading text 24 in chapter 6 called Dhyana Yoga, on page 278 in most of your copies. You don't have the other one. It won't be on 278, but it's 624. You got it? Yeah. Okay. 
स निश्चयेन योक्तव्यो योगो अनिर्भिन्न चेतसा संकल्प पबवान कामांस त्यक्तवा सर्वान अशेषतः मनसायविंद्रिय ग्रामम विनियम्य समंततः ओके सनिश्चयेन योक्तव्यो योगो निर्विन्न चेतसा संकल्प प्रभवान कामांस चक्ता सर्वान शेषतः मनसाय विंद्रिय ग्रामम विनियम यसमंततः सनिश्चयेन योक्तव्यो योगो निर्विन्न चेतसा संकल्प प्रभवान कामांस चक्ता सर्वान शेषतः मनसाय विंद्रिय ग्रामम विनियम यसमंततः सनिश्चयेन योक्तव्यो योगो निर्विन्न चेतसा संकल्प प्रभवान कामांस चक्ता सर्वान शेषतः मनसाय विंद्रिय ग्रामम विनियम यसमंततः कह बाबा सनिश्चयेन योक्तव्यो योगो निर्विन्न चेतसा संकल्प प्रभवान कामांस चक्ता सर्वान शेषतः मनसाय विंद्रिय ग्रामम विनियम यसमंततः पेज टू सेवेंटी एट uh nope you also have a different it's uh, 624 624 got it radhika shiva okay why don't you chant sa nishchayena yukta vyo yoga nevin chet sa Sankalpa Pabhavan Kamans Chakva Sarvana Sheshataha Manasai Vendriya Gramam Vinayam Yasamantataha You have it, Arjun? You have it? Go ahead. Sa Nishchayena Yukta Vyo Yoga Nibin Chet Sa Sankalpa Prabhavam Kamams Sankalpa Prabhavan Kamams Tayaktiva Sarvan Asesta Sakpa Sarvan Asesta Manasya Vendriya Gramam Manasya Vendriya Gramam Viniyamama Samantata Viniyamya Samantata Bajamanu Sanishchayena yokta vyo Yoga nirvinna chetasa Sankalpa pabhavan kamans Chakva sarvana sheshataha Manna saib indriya Manna saib indriya gramam Vinayamya Samantataha. Anyone online? No. Okay. Saha, that nishchayena, with a firm determination. Yogta Vyaha must be practiced, yogaha, yoga system. Anirvinna Chetasa, without deviation. Sankalpa, mental speculations. 
Prabhavan, born of Kaman, material desires, Chakva, giving up Sarvan, all, Asheshataha, completely. Manasa, by the mind, Eva, certainly. Indriya, Gramam, the full set of senses. Vinayamya, regulating. Samantataha, from all sides. One should engage oneself in the practice of yoga with determination and faith and not be deviated from the path. One should abandon without exception all material desires born of men mental speculation and thus control all the senses on all sides by the mind. Purport. The yoga practitioner should be determined and should patiently prosecute the practice without deviation. One should be sure of success at the end and pursue this course with great perseverance, not becoming discouraged if there is any delay in the attainment of success. Success is sure for the rigid practitioner. Regarding bhakti yoga, Rupa Goswami says, I'll say you say, Utsaha nishteha daryat Tat tat karma pravartanat Sangatyaga sato vritte Shadbi bhakti prasidhyati one can execute the process of bhakti yoga successfully with full-hearted enthusiasm, perseverance, and determination. By following the prescribed duties in the association of devotees, and by engaging completely in activities of goodness, Upadesha Amrita 3. As for determination, one should follow the example of the sparrow who lost her eggs in the waves of the ocean. A sparrow laid her eggs on the shore of the ocean, but the big ocean carried away the eggs on its waves. The sparrow became very upset and asked the ocean to return her eggs. The ocean did not even consider her appeal. So the sparrow decided to dry up the ocean. She began to pick out the water in her small beak, and everyone laughed at her for her impossible determination. The news of her activity spread, and at last Garuda, the gigantic bird carrier of Lord Vishnu, heard it. He became compassionate toward his small sister bird, and so he came to see the sparrow. Garuda was very pleased by the t determination of the small sparrow, and he promised to help. Thus Garuda at once asked the ocean to return her eggs, lest he himself take up the work of the sparrow. The ocean was frightened at this, and returned the eggs. Thus the sparrow became happy by the grace of Garuda. Similarly, the practice of yoga, especially bhakti yoga in Krishna consciousness, may appear to be a very difficult job. But if anyone follows the principles with great determination, the Lord will surely help, for God helps those who help themselves. Om Jnana Timurandasya, Jnana Shalakaya, Chakshu Unmilitam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. I was born in the darkest of ignorance, but my spiritual master Srila Prabhupada opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance to him and to all members of Sri Parav, the disciplic succession. So, having heard the benefits of being successful in practicing yoga in the last uh, three and a half verses, uh, which includes, let's see, uh, one is able to see the Supreme Self in the heart by the pure mind, to relish and rejoice in the Self. In that joyous state, one is situated in boundless transcendental happiness, realized through transcendental senses. Established thus, one never departs from the truth, and upon gaining this, he thinks there is no greater gain. Being situated in such a position, one is never shaken, even in the midst of the greatest difficulty. This indeed is actual freedom from all miseries arising from material contact. So if, if you analyze this statement that Krishna just made in the previous verses, you see that this is uh, describing the success of everyone's endeavor, even as in, in this world, even the, not just human beings. And what I mean by that is that uh, in, every, in every life, whatever we're leading, we're trying to increase our happiness as far as possible and decrease our distress. Uh, ideally, it would, the distress would decrease to zero and the happiness would increase to infinity. But of course we know that's impossible. It is impossible on the material plane. 
But that's exactly what's promised here. When you re rejoice in the self, relish and rejoice, one is situated in boundless transcendental happiness. Now we read about those things and hear about them in relation to Krishna and Goloka Bindavan. Anandam Bhudibhardhanam. This is the first verse of the Shikshastaka. Lord Chaitanya is teaching us. He's starting from ground zero, where you, you, you know, you're completely contaminated your heart, but you chant Hare Krishna, and you're cleansing that mirror of the heart. You're getting rid of all the adabras, all the, uh, the, uh, the uh, what does it say, shunvatam, sakata, krishna, punya, shavana, kirtanak, riddhyan, taksto, hyabhadrani, virunoti, suritsatam. This is right there at the beginning of Bhagavatam, second chapter of the first canto. Text, text about uh, 18, 19. And this is a, this is a what happens, this is, he's describing kirtan, he's describing hearing the transcendental sound. And Krishna in the heart, shunvatam sukata Krishna, Krishna understands because he, that there, he's hearing about me from the proper source, in the proper frame of mind. So Krishna from within, he cleanses away all these inauspicious things, these unwanted desires, these six enemies of the mind, lust, anger, greed, illusion, madness, and envy. All of that is being cleansed away. And what's be, what's be revealed? What's, be, what's left after the cleansing? Pure love of God. Nitya Siddha Krishna Brahim Sadhika Bunoy. It's not something that has to be brought from outside. By, by the process of purification, beginning with hearing and then going to chanting, remembering, etc., uh, the, the living entity becomes pure and that natural love awakens. And in that, that natural love for Krishna lies this ever-expanding ocean of bliss that Lord Chaitanya is preaching, talking about. So in other words, it's not... And this, this is a very important reason uh, to uh, study the, the uh, succession of uh, acharyas that, we're, that, that we're, we're coming in the line of. Today happens to be the appearance of Jiva Goswami. We heard some wonderful things about him this morning. He was the, uh, the nephew of Sanatana Goswami and Rupa Goswami. And he regarded Rupa as his spiritual master. But he was an extraordinary Sanskrit scholar and, and said to be, even by Western people who study uh, Gaudiya Vaishnavism, the greatest philosopher who ever lived. Compared, you know. And so he, he's part of our line, Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, Srila Prabhupada going back, and Sabhaktivedanta, Bhaktivedanta Thakur, they all, they all completely had faith in Bhagavad Gita, they realized it, and they also expressed their experience of the highest pleasures of, 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 bhak, of bhakti, of, of uh, serving Krishna and being a reciprocal relation. And we saw it with Srila Prabhupada. So the reason I bring this up is that this should could uh, nourish our faith that this is real. These aren't just stories that someone's making up to try to exploit us. You know, what's the exploitation? You know, this is now, uh, <laughs> the, we, we read the histories and these things happened 300, 400, 500 years ago. And of course, historically we read from the Bhagavatam. And in the highest levels we find that they're, they're completely indifferent. The greatest, the greatest Mahabhagavats are indifferent to the material so-called pleasures. And they're relishing at every moment. They're a relationship with Krishna, and they're giving it to others and giving others an opportunity to experience the same thing. So, uh, how does that relate to our verse here? Well, Krishna is, uh, in this previous uh, two and a half verses, uh, text 20, what is it, 20 to 23, which has three, three lines, uh, he describes this boundless transcendental happiness. One never departs from the truth, and upon gaining this, he thinks there's no greater gain. Being situated from this, he's never shaken, even in the midst of the greatest difficulty. This indeed is actual freedom from all miseries arising from material contact. So there you have it. Your, your difficulty, your miseries, your suffering has been reduced to zero, and your happiness is boundless, ever-increasing. And this is Ashtanga Yoga. So... Now, the, then the, ne the next verse, which we read today, okay, well, it's not so easy to get there. Now, the, one has to engage oneself with determination and faith, not be deviated. One should abandon without conception all material desires. So we, we, we know from experience it's not so easy to do that. So it's a path. It's a marga. The yoga marga, bhakti yoga marga, ashtanga yoga marga. And here, uh, Prabhupada quotes this uh, very important verse from the Upadesha Amrita, the essence of all advice, the essence of all instruction, Upadesha Amrita. 
And uh, this book came out, I think it was 76. I remember I was in L.A. and, and it was published. 11 verses. And it kind of takes you, you know, in 11 verses, it goes all the way up to the point of residing in Radekund and experience. So it's, a, it's a incredibly, and it's just this small little book. And uh, we were sure that this was just a book for the devotees, you know, but no, Prabhupada wanted it distributed widely. <laughs> so they printed 100,000 and they would go out, any other small book, you know. But it, 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 all of these verses are important, and especially for sadhakas like us, uh, the first like seven or eight verses comprise a very important instruction. So let's see if I can remember them now. I didn't memorize them. And actually, when I was in New York, I was uh, a resident of that famous 55th Street Temple. That's kind of become mythological, you know. <laughs> but it was a real. And um, when this book came out, they decided that we would chant the first seven verses after every Bhagavatam class. So everybody kind of had those down after a while, you know. So let's see if I can. So the first verse is, uh, describes the guru, actually. Bacho vegam anasakroda vegam jivva vegam anaropasta vegam etan vegam yovashaheta dira sarvam apimam pradivingsa shishyat. That we were also meant to try to do that. It says uh, the urges of the of to speak, bacho vegam. You know how it is. I remember I was on a bus once. I forget where it was, and everyone was who had a partner. They were all jabbering, you know, <laughs> because the urge to speak, and and it's the 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 internet has multiplied it. The Tower of Babel. You know, everybody's got something to say to try to convince you, sell you of something, you know, join my thing, you know, entice you. So that's Shotavyadani Raja and Niransang Sahasrasha. This is the second verse of the whole second canto, first chapter, where Sugar where Sugardeva Swami is telling Purikit, very nice question. You have asked a question that the answer is a benefit for whole humanity. And that, the question was, what should one think about? What should one hear? How should he uh, uh, direct his mind as death is approaching? Because that was his situation. He had seven days to live. So a very nice question, very important. But then he, then he gave the contrast. I mentioned it this morning. There are thousands, millions, he talked about thousands, but unlimited millions of subject matters other than bhakti that one can hear about. Uh, those who have no vision of their self or the goal of life, it, the mind just goes off into a million different things, obviously. Uh, so, and then he describes in a few verses, you know, ordinary consciousness for people who simply body conscious and they identify with their family and so forth. And they, and, and, uh, but they have no interest or even understanding of transcendental matters. So, he said, don't be like that. Rather, here's, what, here's the answer to your question. Tasmat, therefore, don't waste time, uh, especially the human life, in material pursuits which have a beginning and an end that just keep you more and more bound up. So what's, what's the, 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 this comes like at the beginning of the second cano. You know, it's the, it's the, it's the fifth verse in the whole cano. Tasmat Bharata, Sarvatma, Bhagavan Ishwaro Hari, Shotavyak Kirtitabhyasta, Smartavyak Chaitchitabhyam. For those who desire to be fearless at the time of death, here's the prescription. Uh, o Bharata, O descendant of Bharat. Uh, you should hear about, chant about, and remember, and he gives four descriptions of, of the Absolute Truth. Sarvatma, the Supreme Soul. Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Ishvara, the Supreme Controller, and Hari, the Lord who takes away all of our miseries and gives us you know, himself. So, and what does that lead to? Constant remembrance. Because the bottom line in every, every life that we lead is what are we going to think of at the time of death? You know? So he says, Etavan Sankhya Yoga Abhyam Swadharma Parinishtaya Janmalabak Parakpungsang Ante Narayana Smriti he says, whether you're performing the Sankhya, analyzing things, uh, or, or, or yoga, eta Sankhya, yoga, swadharma, or you're doing nicely in your Varnashram Dharma duties, the test of success will be if you can remember Narayan at the end of life. And that's the, the final exam. Krishna says the same thing, chapter 8. He says, yang yang babi smarang babam, whatever you think of at the time of death, that will determine your next life. Therefore, antakali chamameva, if you can remember me at the end, then you'll come to me. 
So between now and when we have to leave this body because it breaks down, we should do everything we can to deeper, deepen and extend our remembrance of Krishna. And that only works when we uh, you know, direct all of our senses. Like we had this uh, description of Ambarish, right? King Ambarish, he was the ideal. Uh, his mind was fixed on Krishna's lotus feet. His words were glorifying the Lord. Uh, his hands were cleaning the, the mandir. His ears were always hearing about uh, Achuta, etc. Everything was directed to Krishna. So here are these practical instructions. So the first thing is we have to learn to control the urges of the mind, the urges to speak, uh, manasa, krota, anger, and then the more gross urges of the tongue, belly, and genitals. And uh, then he says, if you find someone who can do this, then that person can give you an initiation. In other words, this is, why did he give these things? Because there's so much, so much else that's necessary. These are things you can see. You can see, is someone, you know, obviously if he becomes very angry, can't control his words, you know, and he's, he's about 100 pounds overweight. No. You, should, you know, you should try to give them Krishna consciousness, and it's not someone you want to surrender to. <laughs> but if someone, you know, is always speaking about Krishna, the mind is controlled. In other words, these are things you can, you can kind of check out. So that's the first verse. And the second verse are things you have to avoid. Because in yoga practice, what are the first two? Arjun, you know the, those eight things of the yoga practice? Okay, what's, what's, what's the first two? Yoga? Yeah, this Ashtanga yoga. Ashtanga no, those are the different kinds of yoga. But just within Ashtanga yoga, that means there's eight limbs to that. And the first, the first two are yama and niyama. Yama and niyama. Yama is the don'ts. Niyama is the do's. Before you can start you know, practicing, you have to stop the gross nonsense. Right? Otherwise, you, so yama and niyama. So therefore, he begins with what you have to avoid. Pranashiti. Pranashiti means, means completely destroy. So here's the thing we have to avoid. Overeating is one, the first thing. Or overcollecting. Two of them, two of them uh, expand, so it becomes eight actually. So overeating or overcollecting, more, more than you need, which is just distract your mind, you know. <laughs> Atyahara, priyasas. Hard labor for material things. You know, you're getting, your mind is, oh, you got to make this, got to do this. So you. Prajalpa, famous, nonsense talk. Krishna Kata will take us back to Godhead. Grami Kata will take us to hell. There's a, there's a there's verse. This verse is, I, I, read, I remember I read this, I memorized it. It's a very graphic verse. This is spoken by Brahma. Uh, I think he's, there's this description of the kingdom of God. I think Brahma is speaking that. This is in the third canto. So, he says, so who, goes to, who gets to go to Vaikuntha? He's describing Vaikuntha, the kingdom of God. Who gets to go? Well, he gives a verse about that, but this is who doesn't get to go. Yanna vajant agabado vajananovarat trindvantiye annivishaya kukata matigvi yastu shuta hatabagaya nubadata saras tang tang chapante sadane shuta makso hanta the last, word, the last word is alas in the whole verse, alas, he just described. So what is he saying there? Yanna na vajanti. Here's who doesn't get to go. Vajanti is to go. Na vajanti means uh, uh, don't go. And yad is who? Who, who doesn't get to go? Uh, he described. Agabida. First is, this is a name for Krishna. He who destroys your sin. And he who destroys your misery. Aga can also be difficulty. So that's the one name for Krishna. Rachana Novarat. Rachana means activities. Anuvada means description. So you're hearing description, but you're not hearing about Agabida because it's Anya. And the next word is Anya. It means otherwise. Yanna vajant Agabado Rachana Anuvada Trindvantiye Anya Vishaya. You're hearing and chanting and speaking. Trindvantiye Anya Vishaya. Other topics other than about, Agabi, about Krishna who destroys our misery. In other words, Grammikata or Pajalpa. And what is the effect? It's very graphic, this verse. It's like sobering. Matigni. These topics, you know, absorbing yourself in, in non Krishna Kata destroys your intelligence. Matigni. Tang, uh, yeah, yeah, I would say, uh, Matigni. 
यन्ना विजंतक बदोवना वचनानु भारत चिन्वंदि ये निविशयाकु कुताम दिग्वि यास्तु शुथा one who hears these this thing these drum this material vibration constantly hata bagaya it that those vibrations steal away your good fortune hata bagaya nibbe for the human being atasaras this is an incredible important phrase atasaras means it takes away your interest in the essence of life it just doesn't it doesn't doesn't arise just like millions and millions of people they're so absorbed in all of the thoughts and the gramikata and the Rock music? Do they call it rock music anymore? I'm dating myself. <laughs> Still rock music. There's that other stuff. What is it called? Um, no, the stuff where they just talk. Hip hop. You know? I mean, I thought that would be a phase that had gone by. That rapping. 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 <laughs> well, I know you know there's Rupert rap too. You know. Anyway, I'll give you an example of that later. <laughs> Transcendental rap. So, but then then the last line it says. <laughs> Nibiratasaras, tang tang, the all of those topics, each one of them, chapanti, they throw you down. Ashadaneshu, there's no shelter. Tamaksu, into darkness, alas. In other words, it's all in a sound vibration. So much of our intelligence, you can get education. You know, you're hearing from the teacher, you're reading. That's another kind of hearing. Baba described this it's subtle hearing, internal. But that forms your so much of your consciousness. You know what you're interested in, so that choosing the sound which you will hear and vibrate is a large part of uh, your determination. So, uh, therefore, in the in the in the second verse of the Upanishadamrita, Pajalpo is like an important thing. This is what you have to avoid. Oh, they, these are the things that destroy. Pajalpo means material sound vibration. Niyamagraha. This breaks up into two. Niyamagraha means. Failing to follow the, the, the regular principles of devotional service. You know, the chanting of 16 rounds, following the four regs, those who are living in the temple, you know, Mangalartik, the whole thing. That's the, uh, that's, that's the, the, the principles you have to follow. If you fail, obviously you're not going to advance. But even if you follow them, but you're kind of going through the motions, you show up physically, but your mind's a million miles away. You know? Now this usually often comes with offense. When you offend devotees or you, you, you're offend, you know, offending the holy name, then, then the, the weeds that are still there in the heart, because it's not so, that, that, you know, you have to work on purifying, they tend to, be, they tend to grow and become more powerful. And, and it's, it's like a syndrome, I've seen it, where you, you, from offense you lose your taste, because Krishna is giving you that taste for the holy name. If you offend his devotees, suddenly the chanting, you know, uh, you're not getting the same taste. You know, and therefore you're prone to be attracted to material things. So it's 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 very delicate. We're trying to purify our consciousness. Therefore, the humility is necessary. Following the orders and, and, and associating with more advanced devotees. So these are the things to avoid: the uh, overeating, overcollecting, uh, uh, aspiring for material things with great energy, uh, priyasas, uh, nonsense talk. Uh, Failing to, to, to follow the, the, the principles and practices of devotional service or just doing it uh, w without attention, without de uh, devotion and faith. Uh, uh, Jana Sangha, is, I forgot, is association with non devotees. This is key. This, uh, this appears both in the don'ts and the do's. In the do's, it appears as Sangha Tyagat, giving up bad association. And in the don'ts, says, Associating with non devotees. So uh, uh, that's the uh, very essential part. Uh, uh, um, How's it go? Laulium is greed. Even if you don't get anything, if you ardently desire some material thing, that will cover your, and, uh, your, your bhakti. So, Shadbir Bhakti Vinashiti. These six, six. So now, on the positive side, we have the verse we just read in the, in the in the in the prayer part, which we'll go over for really. Prabhupada gives a translation. Utsahan, you know, there's there's a devotee uh, in Atlanta, who's like just blown away all of the possible, you know, uh, records of, of of book distribution. Yeah, one day he he broke his own record three uh, twice already. Now the the world record, that can only be you know. Imagined by anyone else, no one even. He he distributed. He he collected 
almost $16,000 in one day. And this wasn't because he had a whole bunch of appointments. With, you know, he was selling to Indian stores and big, whole sets of Bhagavatam. And he sold, I don't know, 45, uh, I, I forget how many, but a lot of sets of Bhagavatams and other books. And uh, over th 3,000, I forget the, the full figure, uh, actual books in one day. Now, what's his name? Mohotsaha. <laughs> no, no, uts, no, Utsaha. Look at the first word here. Utsaha means enthusiasm. And Maha Utsan becomes Mohotsaha. No one pronounces his name correctly, but that's what his name is. And they came here. He came here and visited with some of his uh, cohorts from Atlanta. And actually, the whole team was Mohotsaha. When they were in the kirtan, they were going full bore, you know, like, like you, you read on the, you see on the uh, YouTube channel, you know, from the 60s, 70s. So anyway, uh, that's the first word, utsahan, uh, enthusiasm. You can't just be going through the motions. You know, bring your, all your attention and all your enthusiasm when you have the kirtan and everything else you do. And that's what he's doing. And nishtiyad, enthusiasm, determination, and patience. Why do you have to be determined? Because we're so conditioned, you know, be ups and downs, there'll be difficulties. So you have to be determined to go through them and get to the steady platform, nish, the nishta platform, and daya. So enthusiasm and determination and patience. Now you study it, anything you want to accomplish in this world. Suppose you want to learn a, uh, a musical instrument, which I did as a, as a kid, you know. Now, of course, I, you know, I don't, I don't remember going through all these stages, but I was, I was drawn to it spontaneously, so the enthusiasm was there, which, which can take you a long way. But if I had just, you know, picked it up once every uh, few days, you know, this little recorder I was playing, the flute I was playing, I would have never learned anything. So you have to, you have to be enthusiastic, maintain that enthusiasm, be determined, and patient, and that, okay, in time I'll learn it, whatever it is. So that applies also to the process of bhakti. And then tat tat karma pavartanat. Like going through all of the different karma, the activities of devotional service, very assiduously. You know, you're not spontaneously attracted, you have to do it anyway. Anyone who lives in an ashram, you know, the hardest part, of course, is getting up. What are you, what are you waking me in? The, I remember Brahma Tirtha describing, they woke me up in the middle of the night. You know, what is this? <laughs> it was four o'clock, you know. But uh, there's always a cha challenge, you know, when you're getting into it. But after a while, it becomes second nature. You can't sleep. You know, you can't, I, I have to go to Mangalarti, you know. <laughs> so, tat tat karma Sangatyaka, giving up association of non-devotees. And that, you know, and that can come through so many media. It's not just person, but... And in Soto Vritte, following in the footsteps of the uh, great souls, Shodri Bhakti, Prasidyati, these six nourish your bhakti, you see. And then, and then the, the next verse is about, the is about how to relate to devotees. Actually, there's several verses like that. Dadati pratigunati guyamakati pachati bhunte boje tevada shadvidam priti lakshanam. Priti lakshanam. This was before your, your time, but when we arrived here in 89, and I think it went into 90, uh, Prana Dadasi, she started a, a, a little newsletter. I think it was, I think it was monthly or bi weekly, and it was called Priti lakshanam. Priti, Priti lakshanam. Yeah, that's in the, in the next verse. Uh, you know, these, these are the symptoms of uh, loving exchanges between devotees. Anyway, so, dadati pratigunati means uh, giving gifts and accepting gifts. It can be, you know, a glubjim and, and accepting a sweet ball or whatever. Guru Yamakati Prichati, inquiring confidentially and revealing one's mind. It's good to have at least one other devotee you can do that with, you know. And bhunte boji ate chaiva, giving prasadam and accepting prasadam. These are like six uh, symptoms of uh, loving exchange between devotees. And then, and then he gets into this thing. Uh, I, think it's, I think this is the next one. It's been a while. Drishta sabhava janitaiva bhashasta dosha na prakutatami habakta janasya pashe ganga masamna kala buddha da pena panka brahma da vatma bhagachi nirvadami. This is what comes from chanting every day when I was in New York, you know. It's, in, it's still in there even after all these years. So this is how you see, you should see the devotees not on the material platform. And it warns that drishta sobhava janitaya vapashasta dosha. Don't see the other devotees on, uh, according to their body, you know, what the color, where they were born, or things like that. And especially here it describes the word disease, uh, 
I remember when I went to uh, Russia. I got to go to Russia, I think, twice. And the second, times, I w uh, second time, I got to, to participate in this festival. It used to be in Divnomorsk. I don't know if you've ever been up that way. But uh, it's, it's a fe that was on the, a, a resort town on the Black Sea. Eventually, one of the bigwigs in the Russian Orthodox Church bought a villa nearby where we were doing it. And he said, no, I don't want to hear those Hare Krishnas anymore. So they had so much influence, they had to move it. But anyway, I was there in Divnomorsk. And, um, oh yeah, and, and so we were in this big hall. Uh, there were like at least a thousand devotees there. And uh, they'd come from all different parts of Western Russia. You can't talk about Russia. Russia is so big, it's like two or three countries together. There's a whole other festival for Eastern Russia. But, but uh, so there were so many. And I remember seeing one devotee, and he, you know, he had the, the, the two crutches, and he could hardly walk. You know, and I saw him he, with great effort and with some help. He was able to offer his obeisances and get up. You know, and I think, and I was just very impressed at his determination and, and seriousness. You know, but it's it's so easy on the material platform to judge people according to their bodies. So this verse it says, "Whatever you do, don't do that." You know, we see devotees as as very uh, uh, exalted and rare. You know, so that's that's another thing. And then there's uh, then there's two verses that uh, to me were like so essential and and, and he says like this uh, if I can remember um, oh god I can't remember see I'm not chanting it but but what is what it says is that um, oh yeah is that Krishna Kata is by nature very sweet and fulfilling for the heart but just like though if you have jaundice you know what 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 sweet can be very bitter like an ordinary person off the street, you know, they're not going to, they're not interested. You know, for them to sit through a Bhagavad Gita class is torture. Of course, for my Bhagavad Gita, it would be special torture because it's, uh, but anyway, you know, so it's, it's like poison. It's like bitter. <laughs> but the devotee realized, okay, you know, this is an austerity, and, but I've I got to focus on it. And so uh, by doing that, it's just like if you have, probably would call hepatitis jointus. Jointus is actually the symptom of the yellow. That, that, that's a, yeah, that's the same. Yeah, there may be other conditions that produce that, but hepatitis is certainly the most prominent one. Yes, yes. So he's ta so he's talking about hepatitis B here, and but sugar candy is the cure for it, one of the cures anyway. That it, it, but it, you know it tastes bitter, but you know this is the cure, so I'll take it. Sugar cane. Sugar cane. Sugar cane is the cure of uh, jaundice. Yeah. Well, sugar. This is sugar candy. Means very concentrated sugar. So anyway. Uh, and, and he says, if you do that, then after a while, uh, just as in, in this case, you will eventually taste the natural sweetness. So it's naturally sweet for the heart to hear about Krishna, chant about Krishna. But in our conditioned state, we're not interested. We want to hear about you know, some rock star or something, <laughs> politician. So therefore, that's where the, the discipline comes in. No, we, we, we don't want Prajalpa because that's going to destroy my bhakti. So you listen, you listen. So that's the, and then, and then uh, God, I can't believe I forgot. This is what happens when you don't chant them. But the basic point of the, of the last verse I'll share with you is that the essence of all advice, you know, within the essence, so there's 11 essential uh, uh, instructions, so this is the most essential one, you think, is that one should spend all one's time uh, relishing the hearing and chanting, and uh, if possible, live in Vrindavan, in other places, he says, or at least with, within one's mind, and uh, associate with devotees, and in this way, uh, uh, discover, you know, gradually become more acquainted with one's sarup and so forth. So the whole process is there. And then he goes on, you know, because that's, that's verse 8, and there's three more verses leading up to living by Radhakund, and, uh, you know, the, so it takes you all the way there. But the, the idea is that there is a process, just like there's a process of Ashtanga Yoga. And there are those who have gone before. And there are the, 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 Prabhupada, by his great effort, he created this society where you can actually enter into the, into the path. And if you're really determined and, and serious, you can make advancement and see your path back home, back to Godhead. And what's so encouraging, even at the beginning, uh, we learn in the second chapter, Neha Bhikkhu Tipartivaya on the Vidyate. And in this chapter also, famously, Krishna will say, because Arjuna said, what if I don't make it? Because he says, oh, it's too hard for me. But Krishna encourages him. 
He said, no, yes, it's difficult, but you can succeed through practice. So Arjun again said, well, okay, what if I fail? No, no, no problem. One who deviates from yoga, he'll take, but he makes some advancement, will take birth in a, a pure family, which is the best, you know, yogis or bhakti yogis, or a wealthy family, but pious, where you won't have to worry, you know, and spend all your time just surviving, and you'll have time to do your bhakti. In other words, nothing is lost. You'll be able to continue. So I, I take heart in that because you figure, well, I must have made some progress. At least I'm moving in the right direction. <laughs> Which is very encouraging, especially since we're now finishing up, finishing up the chapter in the fifth canon describing the hellish planets, where those who have no, not even the smidgen of bhakti go, you know, if they so many different uh, sinful activities. So it's all very, very positive. And uh, the, you know, Krishna is, is describing now, okay, this is, I, I, I gave you the, the description of the goal, how wonderful that is, unbounded happiness, no miseries. But it's, it's a job. Shanai, Shanai, Rupa, We'll read that. We'll be able to read that verse. Any discussion on this? I hope I didn't get too far afield. But this... Okay, real quick question. Oh, thank you. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hi, Balaji. So I also heard, you know, uh, here from some Prabhu that uh, even demigods or other gods and goddesses sometimes, they forget about uh, who is the supreme personality, who Krishna is. Yes, just look at Indra. And I also um, uh, watched a lot of episodes while growing up, TV serials and whatnot. Uh -huh. When they can't find a situation, they can't resolve a situation, they ultimately, oh, go to Vishnu, Lord Vishnu, Lord Vishnu. This is great about the gods, yeah, the demigods. I'm talking about the gods. Mm -hmm. So why they, for like as humans, we are trying to understand, and we understand, right, that Krishna is the supreme personality. But as a demigod, like, or as a, a god, like, you know, they have a very high authority, why do they forget? Uh, well, the, pr the, the, the problem, if you will, of, of heaven is that it's so heavenly. And that, and the, and the point is, is that um, you can see, like Indra, you know, has so much wealth, so much power, powerful senses, you know, and uh, he, it, it, it's, it's, it's a disqualification. Just like I was just hearing today, um, I like these Queen Kunti prayers, you know. So I pull, I pulled out my, you know, the, the favorite ones that I have, and probably give lectures on them, and I had made a little special playlist, you know. So one of them is. Janmai Shraya Shruti Shribir, Edamana Madak Puman, Naiba Hatti Bidat and Dvai Trama Kinshana Gochara. So, this, this, uh, you are the property of the property less. Those who don't claim any pro property, then, you know, and they're de your devotees, then you're, you know, you really like them. So, here, here but here's the problem. He, these four classic um, opulences Janma, Aishraya, Shruti, and Shribir. So, good birth. You know, which in America I don't even know anything about, but it's an important thing. In Indian, you come in good gotra, you know. And of course, wealth and uh, education and beauty. So, what she's saying there, those who are progressively more intoxicated with these opulences, then what is the result? The tragic result is they cannot call upon you with deep feeling, they can still chant. But uh, Christians, you, know, you, you, you have so many other things that you're taking shelter of and trying to enjoy with. So they may chant, but it's like a social function. You know, it's not from the heart. So this is very important, because what she's saying there is that you can easily be approached, oh Lord, but uh, not by those who are too much involved in these four opulences, because they cannot call on you with, with deep feeling. Meaning that the easy way to approach you is to call upon you with your holy name, Abhidhatta means to address you, with, with deep feeling, with deep uh, desperation, if you will. In This is the problem in the heavenly planets, is that it's so opulent and so nice and there's so much uh, you know, facility for sense gratification that uh, you tend to forget. Don't forget, we read in the third chapter. What is it that covers our knowledge? Kama. Is material desire. Abhitam jnanametana jnanino nekta vairinaha. Kama rupena kondara dushpurena lenaja. This kama is never satisfied, burns like desire, uh, burns like fire, and covers in that no knowledge of the living entity. So that knowledge of the who, who, you know, who's uh, the real Lord and how they should be serving, that can be covered by these, uh, uh, yeah, by, 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 you know, the demigods. And the perfect example is Indra. 
we're sitting here in New Govardhan. What's what's you know? Just look in the corner. You can't forget. Oh, he's he's taking you know invul- to, to the extent that he's ready to kill all the rich Rasis. I mean, really lost it. And and then then what happens? You know the story. If you read Krishna book, after Krishna kills Bomasra and Narakasra and 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 regains the earrings that he stole from Aditi, who's who's the the uh, mother of the demigods, right? And everything. And then he goes back up there with such a bomber. Which is pretty amazing. She's on. Yeah, <laughs> she's got in the battle, you know. She's, and so, so he goes up there, and uh, he returns the earrings. And oh, thank you very much, you know. But then, such a mama, she, she wants to get parijata flower. Why just a flower? I'll take a whole tree. So Krishna gives the whole tree, and then there's a battle. Say, no, no, you can't take. And then there's a little battle there. You know, nobody gets too hurt, I guess. But you know, they come bringing down. And and Sugar Dave, you know, he says, just see this Indra. You know, what an idiot. He's already been through the Govardhan Leela, and he's offered his obeisances, you know. But that's precisely the problem. And that's why he's got the, the, the eyes all over his body, and we won't tell the story, you know that. That's the problem. Hey, Krishna, oh, yeah. can I ask a question? Uh, wait a minute, we have one more local one. We have time for two. Okay. She has her own. Oh, no? Um, I'd like to ask a question about devotee association. Uh-huh. Um, what do we do when we're in a situation <clears throat> if a devotee does something to us maybe almost cruelly and are we is it okay for us to be honest with our uh, emotions and tell them hey I'm not okay with the way you treated me or do we take that and just kind of hold our tongue what is the right thing to do in that kind of situation well it's uh it can be a difficult uh, uh, circumstance because, of course, we want to we want to try to be tolerant, but if we find it's, you know, um, really affecting our consciousness to such a degree that we can't get past it, maybe we have to, you know, we're in a situation where we have to keep associating with that person, which is usually usually the case. That usually will re- inflame, the, you know, a relation that like that happens. So it's it's um, it's a test, and. Uh, w- the best thing to do would be to find someone, some third person who you can can confide in, and uh, get some good 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 advice how you can get past that, or or they can also they can be an intermediary rather than confront because you might inflame the situation, and before you know it, your own consciousness has gotten even more disturbed. So the best thing to do is, I think, you know, just like. Uh, as often good advice is, is to have, have a, an authority that you both recognize who can also be brought into the situation. Because especially in, in an ashram situation, you know, every, every person, it, it, it's, it's a, uh, it, it can be very ecstatic living there, but it can also be a test of your tolerance, a test of your patience, a test of your enthusiasm. Like, so the, the atmosphere is, is very critical, maintained, very positive, rather than let things fester. And so the authorities you know, will be very uh, eager to resolve these questions and things. So that, that's, a, that's a way of, of, of doing it. But it's, uh, if, if it's not possible, then it's, the, you have to find some way of maybe avoiding, you know, if possible, association with that, such a person. So that it won't. It, so that you can just by by time alone, it can heal if you, you know, chant. I remember. I, I remember this in in Mayapur, not Mayapur, <laughs> Mayapur, Miami, where I lived. One devotee had defended another devotee, and uh, he consulted with the authority what to do. And he said, "You should chant. Chant sixty-four rounds." You know, uh, he was a, a very important. Uh, he, he was a translator. I yeah, was, I think, part of the BBT. And so uh, it wasn't like possible, you know, send him to another temple or something. So we said, okay, for, for, day, for several days now, don't do anything but chant. Just keep chanting like that. And uh, he was able to get past it and get forgiven and so forth like that, you know. But it is, it is a test. That's why we have to be very careful, not, you know, to, to not offend devotees. And so uh, that's the best I could do with that. <laughs> anyway. All right, I think, uh, go ahead, Donovan, are you there? Is that you? Yes. Go ahead. Yes, Prabhu, Manji. thank you. Uh, thank you for wonderful class, as always. My question is, Prabhu, when you mention about the 
the intoxications of um, the material, like all the opulences and all the beauty and fame. Yeah, and that's right. Queen, Queen Kunti uses that word. Queen Kunti, yes. So, uh, yes, so those um, intoxication versus real intoxication, that uh, alcohol and all. Yeah. So some people say, oh, those are also in the, so intoxication also. So in that case, how do we explain to people, they said, oh, intoxication can be anything, not only this alcohol, why condemning alcohol so much, but everybody's, you know, eating, <laughs> overeating, or whatever. So how do we <laughs> talk? Well, the, 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 the point is, is that, yes, you can, you can be addicted to uh, honor, being honored, you know, subtle things. Uh, I remember uh, there's a verse, what is it? Mamai Vangsho Jiva Loka Jiva Buddha Sanada Manaksha Stadani Prakriti Stani Karshati. And then it describes transmigration and how when you transmigrate, you get another ear, eye, all, you know, like that. Oh, God, I got to start reviewing, chanting a chapter a day. But the last word is uh, Sevate. And, and I looked this up. And, it, and one of the words, it, it, you get a certain kind of eye, ear, nose, like that. You know, you mean subhuman or human, whatever it is. And then you get, you, you serve through, those, through your senses the, the objects of the senses. But another meaning of that is, is uh, you become intoxicated. In other words, you become addicted. You become addicted to a certain set of sense gratifications, certain set of, uh, you know, what, the things that you eat. Probably is the ex extreme example of the hog. You know, they're, they're, you know, there's their gourmet stool, you know what I mean? I mean, that's what they're into, you know, for them. We can't imagine it. So, so the point is that, yes, you can become addicted to anything. Uh, it doesn't have to be a substance. It could be an activity like gambling that's known to be as addictive as cocaine, you know? Uh, so the, the, you, you, it basically, she's giving these four basic opulences that it's easy to, be, to get completely attached to, uh, beauty, you know, people become so obsessed with their physical appearance, you know, it's crazy, or whatever. So, but certainly there's also the immediately and very seriously damaging things like alcohol and drugs and those things which quickly degrade your consciousness and your brain. You know, it's tragic. Uh, young people, they don't know what they're doing, and before you know it, they, 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 they become disabled from these things. It's horrible. So, so there, there's a, a difference, but there's also a very great similarity between the physical, physical addictions and uh, subtle addictions. Um, but one way or another, they're taking you away from Krishna. We want to become addicted to Krishna. Prabhupada was asked, and this will end here, uh, uh, he was asked by um, John Lennon and Yoko Ono when he was there at their, their, their estate. You know, he lived there before they got a place. And they had a big picture of them, you know, on the wall, obviously intoxicated by something. So he knew the story. So he gave this in a... So, so they want to know, how do I recognize the guru? You find that person who's most addicted to Krishna, and you surrender to them. <laughs> and that means they always want to hear and chant, always want to serve, you know, and they, they like that. <laughs> That's the best I could do. Adiobo. All glory Thank to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Thank you. All right, we're a little behind. So we'll go into our... Sorry. And all glories to Vamana Dave. Sorry, we didn't have too much. We had this morning. It says appearance today also.